Okay, we're going to talk about nomenclature. Um, first thing is first, you got to memorize the names, methane, ethane, propane, butane, and then it gets simpler with uh, pentane, hexane, uh, then you start using the Greek prefixes. Um, but do memorize those. Um, what I'm going to give you is, um, once you memorize them, uh, a little guide for you to make it easier on yourself. I like to start with big ones already because um, they make it a challenge and um, it's actually easier to learn with a big one than with a little one. So um, I'm going to break it down in steps for you um, and hopefully you're going to be able to um, give me names of uh, different molecules. So the first thing we got to look for is functional groups. You have to memorize your functional groups. Um, you have to know double bonds, triple bonds. This is a simple alkane that I draw. So I know there is no functional groups. I know there is no uh, double or triple bonds. So the first thing I want you, the second thing I want you to do actually is to box the longest chain of carbons. The longest chain of carbons I'm going to refer to as parent chain. So your longest chain of carbons has to start um, on one of these carbons. This one or this one or this one. It has to start from the end of a chain. So let's say we count one, two, three, four, five. So this chain right here has five carbons. Let's see if we have another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has eight carbons. Now let's see this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one should be your longest chain of carbons. So like I said, you're going to box it. right there. So that's your parent chain. And we know from the Greek prefixes that this is a decade. So then the next step, the third step is for you to find the substituents. Actually, the next step that you should do is numbering this carbon chain. So you are, you have a dilemma. You can even, you can either start from here or you can start from here. So how are you going to determine that? The way you're going to do that is you got to give the substituents the lowest numbers possible. For example, if you start from here, you're going to have substituents are the other things that are uh, part of the chain, part of the compound, but are not in the par parent chain. So these are substituents. So in this one, if you start from here, you would say one, two, three. So you would say three, three, because there are two, three, three, and then four, five. If you start from here, you would say one, two, three, there's just one, so you only say one, one time at the three, four, five, six. So if you start from here, you get two substituents in three, as if you start from here, you only get one substituent from three. So I am going to start from here, and I'm going to say this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So the next step is for you to circle the substituents that look alike. For example, we have CH3 here, CH3 here, I'm going to circle it. Then if you have another substituent, like for example in here we have another substituent, um, I'm going to make like a triangle or something, another color or something. So I'm going to do a weird shape. And then this one looks exactly like this one. It's an ethyl. 
So I'm going to do another weird shape, the same shape as that one, hopefully. And now we name this two. This two, we know there are methyls because it's just one carbon substituent. So the way we're going to name it is we have to say, since there is two of them, we're going to say the positions. So the positions are three, and the other one is in carbon three. Since there is two of them, you're going to say dimethyl, and you're going to leave it as that. Now, let's take the other shape, and we have uh, a two carbon substituent, so that should be an ethyl. So we're going to name this as, we know it's one is in carbon five, so we write five. Then we know the next one is in carbon eight, so we write eight. And then we name it, since there is two, we start with di. And then we know that two carbon uh, substituents are ethyl, so diethyl, and we leave it to that. Then the final step is for us to put everything together, all the names that we have all over the place. So we start with um, we start with the substituents, the substituents, um, and we're going to list them in alphabetical order. You will not take the di, you will take the e. And in this case, you will take the M. So we know that ethyl comes first. So we say 5, 8, di, ethyl. Then the next substituent, 3, 3, dimethyl. And lastly, the parent chain. They came. So that's how we name a really long um, alkene structure. Okay, let's take a look at what happens whenever you have a functional group. So we said first thing is first, we look out for functional groups, we find a hydroxyl. That means that it has alcohol properties. So, we secondly, we count the longest chain of carbons. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one for six here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I am going to pick this chain right here. This is the one I'm going to box because this is the chain, the longest chain of carbons that contains the functional group. So that gives it priority over the other one. So this then should be just a substituent. So we said the next step is numbering the chain of carbons. We are going to give the functional group the lowest number possible. We no longer care so much about the substituents, but the functional group. So if we start from here, we say one, two, as if we start from here, we say one, two, three, four, five. So it's easier to get one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we're going to name this as two, where is the functional group, carbon number two, and then the chain has six carbons, so it's going to be hexa, hexa, the A, means that it doesn't have any double or triple bonds. It's just single bonds. Between carbon and carbon, there is only single bonds. So hexa, and then the OL is what, what we use for alcohols, hexanol. Then we name the substituent, 
and the substituent's name is a problem. And we have to say what carbon it is. So three problem. And then two hexamol. So the name of this whole structure is three propyl two hexanol. The rule between uh, dashes and commas is you're going to use dash between numbers uh, and letters. When you go, when you transition from numbers to letters or from letters to numbers, you're going to use dash. The comma is whenever you have more than one number, if you want to say three, three, then you use three comma three or two comma two.